Okay, so I'm going to give you a run through of this uh, project that I'm working on at the moment. Um, so here I have a Minolta 7000. It's one of the first autofocus cameras. And in fact, I believe it is the plastic stuck to the bottom of it. Where did that come from? Um, one of the uh, first ever autofocus cameras, and I believe the first autofocus camera ever to have an auto winder and autofocus at the same time. So very much a forefather of all of the, the modern stuff we have today. Um, and um, one of the features that they had was uh, three different sets of battery packs. You could either have um, this large battery pack that has um, four AA batteries in it, or uh, a small battery pack that kind of fit nearly flush with the camera, and that had uh, four AAA batteries in it, or you could get a um, battery pack that took two lithium cells, and that was a uh, like a premium one for things where it was particularly cold, I believe they suggested you use that battery pack. Um, so the focus of this is building a replacement for this battery pack. Um, the reason being this is this takes all of these um, AA cells and they are nearly always flat when you pick the camera up because when you pick the camera up to use it, they've been sitting there for ages and they've just been slowly discharging. A much better way is to uh, is to have a rechargeable battery pack. Then you don't have to worry about them being flat when you pick it up because you can leave it on charge the entire time until you pick it up. Um, so this is my first version of the battery pack. Um, as you can see, it's 3D printed and uh, fairly similar to the design of the original. Um, it takes the, uh, the attachment screw that bolts the uh, battery pack to uh, the uh, body and you put it into the uh, replacement battery pack it's the only part that I've you reused from the original, um, and obviously you can pop that in and out, and you don't actually damage it. So you can go back to the original part if you really want to. Um, the design is pretty simple. There's a lithium charge controller, there is a lithium battery, and there's some LEDs at the top with that. Um, just tell you whether or not it's charging or charged. Um, so the advantage of this is that you take your USB cable, uh, which is sitting on your one of your myriad USB chargers, um, and you just plug it in, and this can stay plugged into your charger and screwed onto the camera at the same time, and the camera's always good to go. Just pull the charging cable out, and off you go, and you're good. Um, so this is the first version. It has a few minor problems, and a few major problems, to be honest. Um, minor problems are it looks kind of crap. Um, it was uh, 3D printed by a, a group called 3D Hubs. Uh, 3D Hubs essentially takes your models and sends them to other hobbyists who have 3D printers. They print them and mail them to you or you can go and pick them up if you're close. Um, the problem is that these guys are all hobbyists as well and um, the tolerances that they're working to are not great. Um, so it doesn't look very great. It doesn't look very good and it required a lot of like uh, cutting and filing and bits and bobs of work to make it actually fit. Um, uh, the other major problem is that there are no spring pins. So the original battery pack has these spring pins that you can see here. You push them in and these make contact with the camera body and these transfer the power. Um, I didn't have any way of building a spring system for this um, at the time so there are brass bars in here and they just pressure fit against the camera body which is um, less than ideal because it has to be very tight and because um, a little bit of twisting and they can disconnect and then you, you lose power halfway through trying to take a photo. Um, so those are the main problems with this original part. Oh, and that the, uh, the, you had to use all of the silicon rubber in here. I had to use all the silicon rubber in here to um, make it kind of sit in the camera without twisting. In the original, this internal portion of the battery pack here keeps it nicely from rotating like this inside the camera body and without having anything inside the camera body it twisted quite badly. Um, so I have learned from my mistakes. Um, the second version has a bar inside here that sits inside the camera just enough to keep it from twisting and that works really well. Very pleased with how that works. Um, and you may notice this part looks very different. It's printed by Shapeways. Um, it's built by selective laser splintering and it's um, both a tougher part and a more accurate part. It's much more accurate. 
Um, the only thing that I had to modify to make this fit the camera perfectly was this bottom uh, pin you might be able to see here, where I actually just misdesigned the, uh, the model by um, about a quarter of a millimeter and had to just file that away. Um, so this is the replacement part. So I'm going to show you me building this one um, because I didn't record anything about building the first one. Um, so essentially the parts that you need are this, you need a lithium battery which is going to go inside it. Um, this is a 240 milliamp hour cell. You might note that it's quite a low voltage compared to the original battery pack which it actually doesn't matter for the camera. Um, it's got some voltage regulation inside it I believe for the uh, the photo uh, cells and the pieces that are doing the light sensing. At least it seems to work accurately enough. Um, and uh, this can pump out a lot of current. The camera draws about 1.1 amps when it's taking a photo, so that's manipulating a couple of motors and bits and pieces going on. So it's actually a surprisingly big draw, but it only does that for about a quarter of a second at a time. So thankfully that batch will put up with it. Um, you need, so the battery, you need a charge controller. The charge controllers are very cheap. They're about $2, $3, something like that, um, which is awesome because you can do things like this and you would originally have been paying like 20 bucks for each of these or having to build your own one from the reference design from Texas Instruments and that's a pain in the ass. No one's going to do that for a little project. Um, and a couple of LEDs. Um, so these LEDs are going to get sanded down a little bit so they fit flat with the top of the case. The original one I didn't do that, so they kind of stick out and look a bit retro and a bit ugly. Um, so he's going to be cut down and fit nice and smooth and clean and modern and you know, all good stuff like that. Um, and I guess the most important thing is these spring bars. This is the big difference between this one and the last one. I have spring bars. These are um, used for watch um, straps and these are really cheap. It's about $4 for 360? Yeah, 360, it says it right there. Um, 360 pieces, um, ranging from eight mil up to 25 mil, so I can pick exactly the ones I need. And I'm gonna use literally two of these. Um, so a little bit wasteful, I guess, but they're so cheap. Um, and those will sit in the spring pin holes and everything will go well and magic and blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna film putting this together as much as I can and soldering it together. Some of it will be off camera, but uh, I'm gonna get on that and I hope you enjoy watching it go together. Okay, first thing first, um, off camera, unfortunately, I've uh, taken those LEDs and you can see there's no round tips on them anymore. Um, I took those and put them under a Dremel and now they uh, they sit really nicely. It's kind of hard to see. I'm not going to put them in because it'll be very difficult to get them back out. But um, they're just the right thickness, which is about that thick. You can see just on two millimeters, um, and that means they'll sit nice and flush with the top and look really good, unlike the last ones. So hopefully these still work. I'm going to give them a little test in a minute to see that they uh, haven't been damaged by the the dremeling process. Okay, so first up, we have to take the original LEDs off of the, uh, of the charge controller so that we can uh, check out what the uh, new one's going to look like and sit on there. Um, let's dry it. Okay, change of plans. I'm not going to do all the soldering on camera because I had to do that at my office which has a better soldering station as my soldering iron just destroyed itself. Um, don't buy a $6 soldering iron, that's a good tip. Um, Okay, so where we are so far is basically all the soldering work is done. So you can see the, the PCB is soldered up. I've taken the, um, the LEDs off and mounted the leads for the, uh, for the replacements. And I have dremeled the tops off the replacements before inserting them in the hole so that they're nice and flush with the top. So it looks kind of nice. Um, the uh, battery is connected up and the leads for the, uh, the, the spring pins are in as well. As you can see, they're just pushed uh, loosely through these holes and the spring pins are put down on top. So um, they're sitting in there. As you can see, the pin is, um, and then you can push it up and down. Okay, so I've had some of the worst luck with my camera so far. Uh, batteries running flat, cards running out, all of the great stuff that you could possibly expect. Anyway, um, I'm done at this point. The, uh, the soldering was all done in the office. Um, 
the uh, gluing and final assembly was just done right now and as you can see the the uh, battery uh, is working you can see the display you can see the light possibly lighting up there um, and it's driving the AF motor so that's uh, doing all the stuff that it should do um, the Assembly is really nice this time. I haven't had to uh, fill it up with silicon seat with uh, silicon sealant or uh, sugru or anything. Um, it turns out that the super glue by itself is perfectly strong enough. There's a it's a massive surface area underneath the PCB um, that is strong enough to hold everything in place. So underneath here is a whole lot of super glue. There's a little dab on the back of each LED to hold them in place, and that by itself is enough to hold the the PCB when you insert the USB cable. Um, there's a little dab of glue underneath each of the contacts as well, just to keep them from dropping out. Um, these had to be, uh, the spring pins had to be cut down because um, it turns out that the, uh, the size that I need is actually shorter than eight millimeters. It's about 7.5, so uh, I had to cut it down a little bit, but now it works. Um, and the battery is held in with some of these glue dots, which are one of the craziest things I've found. They're insanely, insanely strong glue and very much removable. They'll tear paper to shreds if you try and pull off paper, but they're a great kind of a soft gummy glue that um, isn't going anywhere, so the battery's kind of held in there quite nicely. But if I need to pull it out and change the battery or put a bigger battery in later, I can do that really easily without having to uh, snap things off or anything. Um, so yeah, it's all done. You can uh, plug it in and charge it and put it on the camera and it all runs and it looks really good. Way, way, way better than the last one did. Um, and it screws on really nicely as well. It's a little bit, I will admit, a little bit harder to put on than the, um, than the original because you have to be a bit smarter as you're aligning it. Um, but you basically just push into place like that, check that you got the back in line and do, 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 screw it on. and. Immediately you get the uh, power and off it runs. Done, look at that. Couldn't be much happier with that. Awesome, so there you go, that's the project. Done. Hope you enjoyed the bits that you actually did see.